Once you have started your primary assessment, remember that if you identify any areas of concern, these must be acted on before moving forward. Commence the primary A to G assessment with the airway. Look for signs of obstruction, any foreign body, pooling secretions, injury patterns, and tracheal positioning. Listen for any change to the patient's voice, stridal, gurgling, or an ineffective cough. Check the tracheal position by feeling the patient's neck. In a patient that can be classified as a trauma patient, you will also need to check the C-spine. Once you are happy with the airway, move on to breathing. Look at the patient noting their position. Are they sitting up, lying down, or in the classic tripod position really struggling to breathe? Assess the rate, rhythm, and effort they're putting into breathing. In other words, their work of breathing. Expose your patient and look for signs of injury. Listen to your patient. How is their speech? Are they speaking in words, phrases, or sentences? Listen for any audible breath sounds. Move on to the feel component of the assessment, checking the chest wall for signs of injury, and look for chest wall symmetry. Once you have assessed your patient's respiratory status and are happy, move on to circulation. Look at your patient. Are they pale or flushed? And what is their mentation like? Are there any signs of bleeding or hemorrhage? And are they walking on a bed or on the floor? Listen to the patient's apical heartbeat, which is located in the fifth intercostal space in the left midclavicular line. Then feel the patient's pulse. Make sure that you check pulses bilaterally. It is essential to note the rate, rhythm and regularity of the pulse. Check radial, brachial, femoral or carotid pulses depending on your patient's condition. Assess capillary refill peripherally and centrally and check for warm hands and warm feet. Once you have managed any issue with your patient's cardiovascular status, move on to the disability assessment. Use the ACVPU mnemonic to assess level of consciousness. Anything other than an A means that you will need to attend a formal Glasgow Coma Scale assessment at some stage. Assess the patient's pain and manage as appropriate. Once completed, move on to the exposure component of the assessment. Look for any signs of injury and if there are any invasive lines present. Make sure that you maintain your patient's core body temperature throughout the assessment process. In this section of the assessment, it is also important to note the environment that the patient came from. Were they outside in the cold or outside in the hot sun? The patient's fluid status comes next. Ask the patient or carer about the amount of fluids going in and fluid coming out. Assess the patient's oral mucosa and skin looking for signs of dehydration or fluid overload. Note signs such as excessive thirst, excessive urination, or no urine output at all. Determine if the patient has any fluid restrictions in place. In the paediatric population, you can also check for the number of bottles drunk, the frequency and quality of breastfeeding, and the number of wet nappies. You can also assess the fontanelle to determine fluid status. Lastly, check the patient's blood glucose level. If the blood glucose level is high, then you really should consider checking for ketones as well. For more information, please refer to the other resources available as part of the Rural Journalist Nurse Education Program. Commence your respiratory assessment by looking at the patient's general appearance and their position. Are they laying back? Are they sitting up? Are they in a tripod position? Note the patient's level of consciousness. Is there any evidence of peripheral or central cyanosis? Count their respiratory rate for a full minute. 
appropriately exposing your patient, assess for any increase in work of breathing, such as use of accessory muscles, intercostal or sternal retraction, tracheal tug, or is there any evidence of injury? In infants, you might also note head bobbing. Listen to the patient's speech. Are they speaking in words, phrases, or sentences? Is there any audible wheeze or strider present? In infants, you might note grunting respirations. Using a stethoscope, auscultate the patient's chest and back using a step ladder approach. You're noting their presence or absence of breath sounds. Are there any wheezes or crackles present? Palpate the chest and back for equal rise and fall, symmetry, subcutaneous emphysema, or any other injury. For more information, please refer to the other resources available as part of the Rural Journalist Nurse Education Program. Commence your abdominal assessment by appropriately exposing the patient so that you can observe their abdomen. Look for signs of symmetry, distension, bruising, masses or any obvious injury as well as previous scars. Auscultate the patient's abdomen moving through the four quadrants, taking the time to listen for bowel sounds. Lastly, Palpate the abdomen in a clockwise direction around the four quadrants. Start with light palpation and then repeat with deeper palpation. During palpation, it is important to note the presence of guarding or rigidity and to note any facial expressions of the patient. If the patient has pain, commence palpation away from the area of discomfort. For more information, please refer to the other resources available as part of the Rural Journalist Nurse Education Program. Neurological assessment is rarely done in isolation. It is usually combined with other assessments depending on the presentation of your patient. Commence by looking at your patient. Determine their general level of consciousness using the ACVPU mnemonic. Remembering that anything other than an A requires a formal Glasgow Coma Scale assessment. Note the patient's general appearance, their posture, positioning, their facial expressions, and any motor activity they may be doing. And check for pupil response as well. Listen to the patient's description of their symptoms. Note their speech. Is there any slurring of their speech? Is there poor coordination of language? Is the language insensible, not tangible, or are they making incomprehensible sounds? Assess the patient's limb strength bilaterally against gravity and resistance. If appropriate, or asked by the medical team, also check patella tendon reflex or the Babinski reflex. A formal Glasgow Coma Scale assessment is considered the gold standard when determining a patient's level of consciousness. The highest you can score is 15 and the lowest is a 3. For more information, please refer to the other resources available as part of the Rural Generalist Nurse Education Program.
commence your cardiovascular assessment by looking at the patient's general appearance. Do they appear unwell? Are they pale, flushed or mottled? What's their level of consciousness? Exposing your patient appropriately, look for the evidence of a pacemaker. Are there any surgical scars that would represent previous cardiac surgery? Observe for signs of dehydration or fluid overload. Is there any signs of peripheral edema? Using a stethoscope, listen for the apical heartbeat. This is located in the fifth intercostal space down the left mid-clavicular line. Feel for the patient's pulses peripherally and centrally. Note the pulse's rate, rhythm and quality. Check a manual blood pressure. Ensure that you compare pulses and blood pressures bilaterally. Check the patient's capillary refill peripherally and centrally as well. Are the patient's hands and feet warm and dry or cool and clammy? If there is peripheral edema present, is it pitting in nature? For more information, please refer to the other resources available as part of the Rural Journalist Nurse Education Program.